Hi everyone, I'm Pat from the Sewing Studio Fabric Superstore and today I wanted to show you how to thread your baby lock serger for a two thread flat lock stitch. In this video I'll be using the baby lock victory four thread serger but this stitch is available on other baby lock sergers also. Just refer to your threading guide to see if your machine can do it. I love to use this stitch to add a little something decorative and fun to table runners, tote bags, and even little boxy bags like this one here. Stick around to the end of the video for a little inspiration you can use in your next serger project. Let's get started. So I'm sitting in front of the Baby Lock Victory Serger. This is a four thread serger, um, and I'm going to set it up for the two thread flat lock wide. This is a stitch that is very, very beautiful when you use it decoratively and which I find many people don't use because it can be maybe a little confusing or you're not sure when to use it. So let's get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is show you the stitch that we're going to do. We'll get a little bit of a close up here. And so you can see here that this is one side of the stitch and this is the other side of the stitch. Um, and you'll understand that in a second when we do it and I stitch it out. So you'll see the, uh, the back side of the stitch is like a ladder stitch. And I'm going to be using Dazzle Thread. So this is a great stitch to use a heavy decorative thread so that you really have something that comes out really stunning. Um, so let's get started. Let me put this to one side. First thing that we're going to do is take a look at the Victory Quick Reference Threading Guide. If you have a baby lock serger, you um, are, I hope, would be very familiar with your Quick Reference Threading Guide. So we're doing the two thread flat lock wide. So it tells us up here right away that we're going to use the left needle. I already have, um, I took out the right needle. And to make things a little different and to be able to use a heavier decorative thread, what I've done is in my left needle, instead of using the regular needle, the, a serger needle, I use a top stitch size 14 needle. So this is what um, the packaging looks like for that. So size 14 top stitch needle. And why am I using a top stitch size 14 needle? Because it's got a longer eye and it enables me to be able to use a heavier thread because the eye is longer and I'll be able to get the thread through the eye. Okay, so left needle is in. So I'm gonna just move across here. It tells you to put your stitch length between two and 2.5. So why do they tell you, they give you a recommended length? Because you can adjust the length on your stitch according to the weight of your thread or how you want your thread your stitch to look. So sometimes the heavier the thread, the long you want to lengthen it, just like on your sewing machine. You want to lengthen your stitch just a little bit longer so that it looks right and it doesn't stack. So now moving across here, it tells me to put my stitch width at 7.5 and then my stitch selector at A. The other thing is moving down here it's showing me that I need to swing over my subsidiary looper. And I'm going to show you how to do that in one second. But that's an important step um, on this stitch. It's a, it's a very unusual threading path, too, for um, the two thread flat lock. So normally, now when you look at the picture here, normally, this, this is where you would put your um, left needle thread, which I have set up here as my purple thread. But normally that left needle thread would come down this path, the first path on your serger. Let me show you over here. So normally this would be your left needle, right needle, upper looper, lower looper. But pay attention to your threading guide because it's skipping over your left and your right needle path and they're 
we're going to thread it with a needle thread going through the upper looper path. So very, very important step too. Very out of the ordinary for the serger, but th that's how you get this very beautiful stitch. So we're going to thread it down the upper looper path and we're going to come all the way across around there down and through the needle. And then over here, my other thread, I have it set up here, um, ready to thread. I'm using Dazzle Thread and Dazzle Thread is eight weight thread by Wonderfill. And it's got like a, a glimmer of metallic running through it. So it's really, really beautiful for this stitch. So that one, it shows you how to thread it. And that thread comes down through the normal track. Okay, so let's get threading here. So I'm gonna put this down. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to thread this thread here. Can you see only two threads? So let's open this up. We're gonna open up the front of the machine. Um, I have my dazzle thread set up here and I have to set up my machine to thread my lower loopers. So how do I do that on the Victory? You press this little button here and then you turn your hand wheel towards you and there's going to be some action going on in here. You're going to see that as your loopers line up here, I'm going to take my finger away so you can see, my tubular loopers lock up. So now my machine is locked up and it is ready to thread. Now I know that this heavyweight thread will not jet air thread through. So I am going to use my wire. And can you see, this is how it comes in your, when you purchase one of these machines, you may think what on earth is that? Or may think that um, you're never gonna use it. But this is, this is a very useful little tool. So can you see it's just a wire threader. It's got a sharp point on one end and on the other end, it's got an eye like an eye of a needle. So what I'm gonna very gently do is I'm gonna uncoil it and it's gonna spring out. Can you see? Okay, so, and I'm gonna take the pointed end and I am going to push it through First of all, I'm going to tell it I want to, so this is where you select the portal that you want to thread. I'm going to select my lower looper. I'm going to put my wire through and it is going to come out. Can you see how easy that goes through? It's going to come out at the other end. Just, can you see here it's coming out? I'm just going to, push it through a little bit more. I'll use my tweezers. Can you see this? This is my the other end of my wire threader. So now that I know that it's gone through the complete path, I'm just gonna pull it through a little bit and then I'm gonna take my thread that I wanna thread. I'm going to lift up my presser foot. Always remember that when you thread any machine, you want your presser foot to be in the up position. I'm gonna snap this in up here and then I'm going to come down here and there's just a little hook keeps it in my threading path. I'm going to make sure this doesn't get tangled up. There we go. So you'll notice too that I have my thread. I, I took these off my machine because they're kind of like claws and you only want to use these when you're using a cone of thread and I'm using a spool. So I have it sitting on my little spongy spool cap here. So now I'm gonna take the end of my thread and I'm gonna thread it through the eye of my wire. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that I have enough thread so the length travels through and then I'm gonna take my wire and I am going to pull it through. Can you see what's happening there? It's pulling it through and it comes out the other end. So just like that, very easy. That's why this wire threader comes with the machine because not every thread, depending on the weight, threads. And then I'm just gonna cut it and leave about four inches in there. So I'm done with that. 
So because this is threaded now, I'm going to unlock my threading. Can you see when I move this lever over, it unlocks it and now my machine is back to surging. Now I'm gonna go ahead and thread my other thread. So I have my spool up here. This is spaghetti 12 weight thread. I am not gonna snap it in the first one or the second one, which is normally what we would do. I'm gonna snap it in the third one. Now, I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna travel all the way across. I'm gonna go up here, around, and then once you've threaded the top part of your machine, then you can put your presser foot down. I'm gonna take my thread and I'm gonna put it behind the hook that's above my needle. And on your wheel, on your hand wheel on the side of your machine, on this particular machine, there's two green lines. When you line up your two green lines, it puts, it sets your needles at the highest position so it's easier to thread. So now I'm gonna go ahead and thread my needle. If you're having trouble threading the needle, I like to use Dritz's looped needle threader. So you see it has a very large eye and it has a point on the other end. So what you would do, I'm actually going to use my tweezers, um, is I'm, I have my needle at the highest position. I am going to thread, find the eye of the needle with the wire. You see how it went straight through? Okay, so now I'm just going to pull it through a little bit and then I'm going to take my thread and I am going to thread it through the eye. I know nobody likes threading needles or sometimes it can be hard. Okay, so I've got it threaded through the eye and now I'm gonna come here and pull that through a little bit so it doesn't come unthreaded. Make sure that it doesn't get caught on your knife or anything. Okay, now I'm gonna reach to the back and I'm gonna go ahead and pull it through. And you can see that it was that easy. So now my spaghetti thread is threaded. So now I have my machine threaded. So now we're gonna take a look and make sure that the settings are set right. So on my stitch width, my quick reference threading guide tells me to put it at 7.5. This dial here is my stitch width. So I'm gonna take it all the way to 7.5. My stitch length is recommended between two and two and a half. This is my stitch length dial here, and it's gotta be set on standard, not on rolled hem. You wanna have it on standard. I'm using a heavy thread, so I'm gonna set it at 2.5. But remember, when you go to stitch um, this stitch out, if you feel that you want your length to be a little longer or shorter, closer together, you can adjust your stitch length here. Then the last thing we're going to do is um, check that your stitch selector is on A, which I have, it, I have it set on A here. So finally, I have to move over or swing over my subsidiary looper. So I am going to gently pull this over. Can you see how it's got a little hook on the end? And what I need to do is swing it over and it'll snap the little hook on the end. You want it to snap into the eye of your upper looper. And I should also mention that you need to have your needles. Um, I have my needles at the highest position and my upper looper all the way up so that I'm able to do that easier. So can you see how easy that was? I know I've got it engaged in there. So what is gonna happen there is 
it's going to assist because I'm, I'm not using an upper looper thread. It's going to assist my lower looper thread in coming up and locking with my needle thread to create the stitch. Okay, so now we are ready to get stitching. So now we're ready to start surging. This is the really exciting part when you see this beautiful stitch coming off this machine. But I'm a double checker and when I teach, I always tell everybody, double check your machine before you start. And one of the things that I like to double check is make sure that your differential feed, which is your feeding system, is set at end so that you have a normal feeding system. And it is, I've got my stitch selector on A. I have my needle thread coming off. It went through the needle and then I have it coming off to the left. And then I know that um, my looper thread is threaded correctly. I've got my stitch width at 7.5 and I have my stitch length at 2.5. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my presser foot down and I have my two strips of fabric here. I like to use batiks and I recommend batiks in the beginning because both sides look pretty much the same. And with this stitch, you can use either side as your right side, so to speak. So just to give you an example, on these two here, I marked wrong side and wrong side. So in other words, my wrong sides are together because when you start to stitch, you need to kind of decide, as I say with batiks, you could use either side. Do you want this thread? Do you want your dazzle on and your looper thread as your top thread? Or do you want your ladder stitch as your top thread, so to speak, that's gonna be visible. And you'll understand that in one minute. So I put the wrong sides of my fabric together. I'm just gonna lift up my presser foot and I'm going to guide it just to the left of my blade that's here. And I'm gonna put my presser foot down. I'm gonna line up the edge of my batik. And I just wanna kind of shave the edge of my batik off. So I've started surging. And right away I see my stitch coming off at the back. I'm gonna go ahead so that you understand how stitch length works. I'm gonna move my stitch length up to about a three and a half because my stitches are stacking a little bit. Okay, so I'm just barely shaving the two lined up edges. And now what I'm gonna do is I'll just surge off. Now also, when you start to surge, make sure that you're looking at your threads on top and that they're feeding off freely and not getting caught up or getting married on top. Okay, let me just finish. I'm gonna surge off and look at what I have here. So, when I was talking to you about deciding which is your top thread, I used my dazzle as my top thread. And you can see, at, this was where I first started. My stitch length was at 2.5. And you see how close together the stitches are? I brought my stitch length or changed it to 3.5. And you can see how it spread them apart. So always test and then you can decide, I actually, like my stitch length at 2.5, which is what they recommended. So now we're going to flat lock it. So we're going to take our fabric and we're going to open it up like this, grab both pieces. You're going to grab either side and you're going to give it a gentle tug and you'll feel it flattening out. Can you see what's happening here? Okay, so I'm just gonna go up my piece of fabric. As you go adding more and more strips, it gets a little bit easier. Now, when you start surging your strips together, normally I cut a pile of strips and I have them all different widths next to my serger. And so I just keep grabbing another one and adding it. But what I do do, this is, just a tip so that it looks 
equal as you go along is that I try, I remember which one I want on the left. In other words, this is going to be my first strip. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep adding to the right here so that my stitch looks even and balanced as I go across. So I don't add here and then add here and then add here. I just decide this is my first one and I just keep adding to the right. Okay, so this is my top, right? And then when I turn it over, look at what I have on the bottom. Can you see where my stitch length was really short? I have my ladder stitch here on the other side. And as I say, when you, when you do your, your first test, you can keep giving it a little tug. And then obviously at the end, you're going to press it well. If you decide after you do this, that you prefer this side or you want this to be the top of your um, boxy bag, which is actually what I've got here, you can do that. So look at how pretty and how easy that was. It's all about just paying attention to the way you thread your machine, which isn't hard and making sure the settings all line up. Now I'm going to show you a few things that I've made as samples for the store to inspire you to use this stitch on the baby lock serger. So of course I have my boxy bags, which have been very popular. And on this one, you can see I've used the ladder stitch as my right side. This is a boxy bag. I use the inner form, double-sided fusible inner form. And then I have a zipper. Here's another one. This is really pretty. All the blues, again, using the ladder stitch as my right side and inserting some ribbon so that um, you can hang it or hold it. Now, let me just talk one second about these zippers because this actually is a zipper here that I painted with light blue acrylic paint to tie it in to the theme of my batik. So what zippers did I use? I've been using the Zippity Doo Done by June Taylor. So if we get a close up, we sell these in the store and we have them on our website. And what it is, it's a very innovative and easy way of using a zipper because I know a lot of us are a little intimidated by zippers, but this, this zipper actually has a casing. Can you see here? So you can actually insert your project and stitch it down. And so you have ample room to stitch it down. And because I, these boxy bags that I make using the inner form are kind of bulky, I love that. But what happens, let me lay it down here so you see this. What happens is that these zippers come in solid colors. So I like to customize them to the colorway or the fabric that I'm making my project out of. So on this particular one, this started as a white zipper and I painted it with um, turquoise acrylic paint and then I just dotted it. This one is a navy one and I just did a few strokes of color on there. On this particular one here, this is my Christmas boxy bag. It's a good way of using up your scraps and if you notice, it's, they're all different widths. So look at how pretty that is. So this also is the zippity doo done zipper here. But what I did was that I used Baby Lock's patented wave stitch on the upper edge. So those of you who have a Baby Lock serger that has the wave stitch, I waved it on the top edge and then I attached it to my boxy bag. So just another idea of something that you can do. Okay, let's move along here. I'm gonna move these over to one side. Those make great gifts, by the way, a great way of using up your scraps. I have some samples here that I wanna show you. Um, 
So this is what I, if for any of you who are interested in doing the boxy bag, I just start out, I just cut a whole bunch of strips, all different widths of batiks. A lot of times what I'll do is um, my narrower strips, I'll cut out of fabric that is um, a stronger color, but it's up to you. It doesn't, they all come out beautiful. So just have a pile of strips, iron them well, put them by your serger and just start stitching them together. Here's another couple of samples that I'm working on. This one I showed you at the beginning of the video. So this is where the stitch is alternated. I've got ladder stitch here and then my decorative looper one here. On this, on this one here, this one is coming out very nice. Um, I did not use the dazzle thread. In other words, the sample that I was stitching on the video, I used the fuchsia dazzle, which is these. Comes in beautiful, beautiful colors. It's by Wonderfill. Beautiful colors. But on, I also like to use the spaghetti thread by Wonderfill, which is 12 weight. So that's one side of my batik. And then I'm going to flip it over and you can see the other side is the ladder stitch. Now, what you should know is if you use this as your right side, your needle thread, which is my ladder stitch, right? Is your needle thread. Your needle thread does show up. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but this one, the turquoise is my needle thread and then um, the darker blue is my looper thread. Okay, so moving on here, here I've got another sample. This one I actually have fused to the double-sided inner form and I've started quilting it. What I do is I use a long stitch, three, three and a half inch, 3.5, sorry, 3.5 millimeter, and I quilt it and I fuse the back on there too. And then once I've done this, I turn it into a boxy bag. So you can see it has a lot of structure. Okay, and then I have a new one that I'm working on. I love this. So these are Free Spirit, some of the K fabrics. Um, and I decided that I didn't want to use the dazzle, that it was just um, maybe a little bright. So, and I used the ladder side of the stitch. And you can see I've got it lined already. I'm ready to turn it into something. So these are my strip bags, so to speak. And then I've also been working on something else here. I love using pre-cuts. I know some of you love to use pre-cuts. It just, it just makes everything go so much faster because honestly, I don't like cutting. So here is a five inch, I'm gonna lay it down. Actually, I'm gonna lay it down. This particular table runner, I'm gonna open it up so you can see it, is Firefly, but it's Ruby Star Society. And it's, it's a really, really unusual, very popular collection of five inch squares. And what I did was I flat locked it together. And I used, in this case, um, on my looper thread, I used Razzle Dazzle by Ricky Timms. And then in my needle, in my top, top stitch size 14 needle, I use the spaghetti thread. So if you look closely at this, you can see that my dark metallic thread is framed in turquoise. So it's very effective, very pretty. And I can make, because a serger goes so fast, because sometimes people ask me, why do you use a serger for quilting? And I say, you know, I'm not really a quilter. I don't put together big quilts, um, but I like to use a serger because it goes fast and I like to go fast. It also shaves the edge clean. And so everything looks really nice. And I love to use a serger. So th that's me. That's how I roll. So here I have another table runner. Can you see when I um, get hooked on something, I get hooked. So on this particular one, again, I just use spaghetti thread. I like the way it looks. This is a Moda collection, Wild Meadow. 
And then my third one that I did, this, this actually was the first one that I did. And then I enjoyed doing this one so much, making this one that I made two more. So this is Happy Hearts. And I used the Razzle Dazzle by Ricky Timms. And it takes me maybe an hour and a half to, it depends how many interruptions I have. It takes me about an hour and a half and I use the five inch squares most of the time, at least everyone I've used, it brings 42 squares. So I always have two left over. All I do is surge them together into a runner or into a little um, child's throw. It's a perfect size for a child, just for them to have a little kind of blankie to play with. So really nice to have. Having said that, I do want to tell you that um, when you're using the metallic threads, sometimes these can be um delicate so be careful with that these table runners i'm not going to necessarily throw into the washing machine um, so because the thread is sitting on top and it's only locked together with two threads so just be aware you know think about what you're going to do um, what thread you're going to use and use you know the the proper thread according to what you're doing thanks for watching this baby lock video if you're interested in seeing what else a baby lock serger can do for you stop by and see us happy sewing